There's a, a lot of grease build up in here in all the nooks and crannies. And uh, you know, as anyone would know, if you're going to try and paint on something, you definitely want it grease free. So I've just been using thinners um, on, with a brush and sort of dabbing it in, wiping it off with a cloth and constantly doing that. And it's getting cleaner and cleaner. Uh, stage by stage but I'm still uh, a long way from uh, the area to be ready for painting because of course um, once I've sort of degreased all the area then I've got like a, a load of rubbing down to do um, surface rust which I've got to treat and whatnot um, and I, I've set myself sort of the target date of having this ready for primer on Saturday so that again I can come back in on Sunday and give it its um, top coat. Oh, yeah. It's hit and miss whether I'm going to get there um, really with the amount of work that's left here but I will crack on. It hasn't been a massively progressive day today. I haven't done too much. I've mainly been grinding rust off the uh, inside of the engine bay here and uh, cleaning it up with a hell of a lot of thinners to break down the oil and grease and giving it a slight rub down for now but uh, one of the things that I did decide to do which um, perhaps isn't factory spec but it's it's a definite improvement um, is to apply seam sealer on all new cars where you get two panels joining each other they, they put seam sealer to stop any moisture getting in between the gaps. Don't forget, something's only spot welded um, every couple of inches or so, whatever. There's still gaps between the two metals. So the idea of seam sealer is to um, block those gaps and moisture, dampness can never get back into them. So as I say, I decided I'd go this route. Um, and once it's painted, it actually looks quite fine as well. But that way I know that um, if this car ever rusts, it's never going to rust at the seams um, again. So that's one of the improvements that I've made on this car. But other than that, everything else I'm keeping to specification. With the seam sealer setting off, there's not much I can do anymore. So um, I grabbed a load of stuff and brought it home and uh, decided to mess around uh, improving the little bits and pieces that I'm going to put back on the car. Just put everything in boxes, more boxes, some bags and more boxes. And uh, I've already made a start on some of the bits and pieces here, cleaning off all the old paint. And uh, here you can see the steering rod, just cleaning off all the old paint and I can primer those and uh, give them a coat of satin black. It's a great moment for me because I've finally undercoated the uh, engine bay and this was a mammoth task because there's so much to an engine bay um, and so many parts you've got to remove and on top of that there was little dots of rust all over the place which I had to deal with and um, you know, at times you feel like I'll let that one go but I couldn't let any single little bit of rust go I had to finish it all off and make sure that it was going to be perfect underneath the bonnet um, what can I say um, I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out the effort was well worth it and um, the car is or the project is going to plan and the plan for me is to finish it by Christmas uh, and considering we're at the beginning of November, I haven't got much time to, uh, or much time left. Here's a little look at what it looks like, and um, right now it looks like it's just come out of the factory. I spent hours and hours rubbing down inside this uh, engine bay, as I say, dealing with every, every little problem that it had, and um, it paid off. 
And I've got to say, the seam sealer looks really nice on it as well. I've got a nice finish going all around the wheel arches and it wouldn't even notice. Um, if you didn't know, you'd just think it was naturally there from the factory. Today's the day when I finally get to paint the engine bay. I've got everything prepared, undercoated and masked off and um, just about to mix up the paint and uh, apply it. And once again, I've um, set up my little cocoon spray booth to keep the fumes out of the rest of the garage. So here is the uh, finished engine bay and I've got to be honest there are a couple of runs but um, in places that won't really matter anyway. If I see anything obvious I will deal with it but other than that this just needs um, a slight compound to get rid of a, any dust over the top of it and um, it's ready to go. And that is making the car look whole lot better and I couldn't help myself but a yellow car deserves to have a yellow dipstick so with that done um, all I've got to do now is concentrate on the little bits and pieces that I've taken home the ancillaries and whatever give them a good clean up spray them um, whatever and then start fitting them meanwhile um, work is going ahead on the cylinder head which I'm hoping I should have that back sometime this week. I might not be ready to fit it because um, I've got other bits and pieces I want to do. But um, slowly, slowly, little bits and pieces will now start getting added onto the car and making the engine bay look like it's hopefully just come out of the factory or came out of the factory 10,000 miles ago. Right, back at the garage. I've had a few days off for one thing or another and uh, I've come back to a nice as you have probably just seen a nice shiny engine bay and now I'm just trying to uh, get rid of a few more bits and pieces um, so that I can clean up the sides of the block and uh, get it painted so one of the things I wanted to do was take off this timing chain cover because it's so uh, horrible looking and it, I'll never get it clean while it's on there not the way I want it to be so I decided to take that off but to take that off I had to take off the pulley that was in front of the timing chain cover but in order for me to take off the pulley from the timing chain cover I've had to do the undo the bolts which hold the steering on and, and the, I know I say it before like the job before the job before the job but nevertheless I'm there now so oh, in fact the, the steering rack is completely ready uh, is completely off now i've undone it completely so i can just give that a good clean up on the floor over there managed to get the um exhaust manifold off that was an awkward job because some some of the bolts are like so hard to get to and you haven't got a universal joint which luckily i do have a universal joint for your socket set you're trapped with that you're never gonna uh you struggle really badly to take that out I'm also now thinking while I'm at it, what's left? It's only the starter motor and I could paint that up and make it look really nice and plus it gives me a bit more access down there. So that will be the final job. Um, then I can start what I plan to do today, which is cleaning up the side of the block ready for when the paint arrives for me to paint it. So now the uh, timing chain cover is off, I've inspected the 
the cogs and uh, they look all in really good condition all around here as well um, the chain seems fine as well so there's nothing for me to change there other than the gasket um, so now I can just sort of carry on um, scraping off like bits of rust, bits of grime all from around the side of the engine and uh, the only other job which I uh, still haven't done all this time was drain the engine oil out uh, so that I can take out the oil filter and I've had a go at taking off the sump plug but that's just like really seized on so my brother said he's got a the machine that will vacuum the oil out of there for now just so we can do what we want and later on when we put the car up on the ramp we've got better access to taking off the um, sump plug so now all I'm left with is to um, degrease the engine I'm using um, a product called Geyser on this which breaks down oil and grease and then you can wash it off with water so this stuff is water soluble. I've just started uh, paint in the engine block and already you can see the massive difference it's made. Um, sheeted a little bit with the um, those core plugs or whatever you call them. I didn't change them, um, didn't think there's any reason to change them, they seem to be fine but I just sprayed them with a little bit of gold paint uh, just to give the block a little bit of a contrast and that's like such a silly little thing for me to do I could have just painted them in black but I thought how nice that would look the, the black and then like this little bit of gold that comes from nowhere in the engine and just catches your eye from a certain angle um, this is a bit of a slow process and be really careful with it. I don't want it dripping all over the place. Certainly don't want it on the um, bodywork here. So I imagine I'll be spending the next couple of hours doing this. But it's satisfying anyway. All I need is a cup of tea in, and I'm as happy as could be. I've finished painting the engine and um, I've decided to also get down to some of these uh, cross members part of the chassis while I'm at it and did them with the sort of anti rust coating as a as same as what I did with the rest of the chassis that's still going off um, and sort of looking quite tidy at the moment one of the things that I was going to avoid because just weren't sure about doing it was um, changing the timing belt and I felt like the timing belt is all right and you said timing chain rather I felt it's all right why bother changing it but it seems it's almost rude not to change it after coming all the way up to here um, why not just put a fresh one on and then you know it's done so I've just cleaned up all around the gasket area now and um, ready to sort of take off this uh, pulley and put the new uh, chain in there now, this one has got quite a bit of play in it uh, that's probably too much the uh, new timing chain comes uh, it's a complete kit comes with an a new tensioner, a gasket, an oil seal as well. So it's, it's a full um, service for the timing area. So as I say, I had to do it in the end. So all that remains for me to do is undo these bits of metal and remove these two bolts, put the timing chain on without moving the camshaft so as not to upset the timing in any way. And um, then I can carry on and put the timing chain cover on and uh, steering rack and, and everything else.
Right, I've just changed the timing belt. It was easier than I thought. Um, didn't need my marks. As long as when I took this off, I didn't disturb the camshaft, which I didn't. Um, put everything back on the same way, it's fine. And now, look at the difference between the tension of what it was and what it is now. So, I'm glad I did that. Um, that, that was a good call in the end. Right, now I've got the uh, timing chain on. Here is my timing cover, which I've re-sprayed and lacquered silver. I put a new oil seal in there and a new uh, So it's just uh, ready for me now to whack on the gasket and fit it on. I'm going to dry fit it first of all, make sure it all goes fine. But yeah, this is ready to go on. So that's me done for today, um, and I did pretty good. Managed to get the uh, engine block painted, as well as some of the chassis areas above here, which I couldn't reach before. Uh, refurbished the steering rack and put that back in. That looks all nice. So we've got a great contrast between black and silver going on at the moment. So that's me done for tonight, um, and what I would say, a good day's work anyway. Uh, tomorrow I'll be in and hopefully um, fit the alternator, I've got also the um, windscreen wiper unit which I cleaned up, painted, made it look nice as well. So I think I might be fitting some of those bits tomorrow. I'll decide when I get here.